David Mayer, the name which was all across the internet last week, except in ChatGPT. And in this video, we'll be talking about what really happened with that name, David Mayer. If you really followed the internet last week, you might have heard about this quarrel across the internet saying why David Mayer name was not accepted or being processed by ChatGPT. So if you try to give the name David Mayer in ChatGPT something like this, you will see that it always responds something has gone wrong, which is kind of crazy because you know that it's just a simple name. If you try to give my name like Karthik or Exit Automation or whatever, it just works fine. But why just the David Mayer was a problematic thing all across? While there were so many discussions happened among that particular problem, it was a conspiracy around the name David Mayer de Rochet. Maybe he is the one guy who would have probably made this name disappear, but that was a conspiracy theory. It was told that he might have reached to OpenAI to remove his name, but that was not the case. He also told the exact same thing that it has nothing to do with him at all. And there was another theory with people saying it may be because of the GDRP rules of European Union because you have a law there that you can remove the name from the chat GPT itself completely if you really wanted to. You can do that as well. So that might be one of the reasons why this issue have happened, but that was also not the case. And finally, chat GPT team came up and they told that it was actually a glitch in their system, which the tool has mistakenly flagged it to prevent appearing the responses which was the issue actually which the OpenAI team has told. So somehow their tool has flagged it, the flagged the name uh, as something which this should not be shown. And that's the reason why this issue has happened. And finally, that whole conspiracy gone away yesterday. So that was the issue about the name David Mayer in OpenAI's ChatGPT last week. But that's not just the only case with the OpenAI. If you have followed the Google's Gemini uh, model, it also has got these kinds of problem. For instance, somebody tried to ask like, cheese not sticking to pizza. And then the response which the actual Gemini gave was this. It said, you can add about one eighth cup of a non-taxic glue to the sauce to give it more thickness, which is crazy. Like this is how you respond. Well, not. That was one problem that the Gemini AI was responding. Even further, they gave some more crazy responses before, like how to pass kidney stone quickly. It told that you should aim to drink at least two quarters of urine every 24 hours, which is even more crazy because that is another problem with this model. And finally, there was another problem which was happening last week saying the Gemini was telling the people to die which is also another crazy thing which was happening. So all these problems with these models in the internet which is kind of swirling around and people are talking about that all the time, every single time while the AI models start responding in a very nonsensical fashion. And we all know that this chat GPT always have a message saying chat GPT can make mistakes. So please check. I mean, that's okay. I mean, we can check the information. But what if some people who have no idea about the thing that they're talking about and they fully rely on these model in future? Because you can see that these chat GPT or Gemini, all these models are trying to fuse with the search engine these days. And the response that we are getting, we're starting to believe that those responses are quite right. We can't double check anywhere, even though we try to search it, they will lead to their search bots as well. So that's the reason why sometimes we started to feel that these kind of model responses needs to be accurate, not always predicted or maybe biased. So how do we fix or test these kind of problem? That's the thing why I came to this particular discussion itself today, because I'm not here to talk just about the uh, conspiracy theory or what has gone wrong with this particular AI model, but I wanted to see how we can test these kinds of AI models so that it always, I mean, at least not always, but at least try to give the responses that we are looking for in a correct fashion, not in a biased and unbiased, unfair manner. So how do we do this kind of testing in AI? But once again, I'm not an expert to do an AI based testing because even open AI team has told that as we know, a huge amount of personal data is gathered, including from public sources such as the internet to develop AI model to produce their output. This means the ability to trace and delete all personal information capable of identifying a single individual is arguably practically impossible. While people always say that, how do we actually ensure that these kind of testing can be done in a better, better fashion? I'm going to show you some quick testings that you can actually do to test the AI model. And one of the example is this one. So you can see that we can do testing using the data augmentation. So what is this data augmentation really means? 
For example, with data augmentation, we can improve the data set by adding diverse examples, including the edge cases, rare scenarios, and names, which can help reduce the problem happening. Because you know that all these models are being trained with a large amount of data set. The data set can be included with a glue to just ensure that the performance is always matching the particular metrics and also the data set is always injected in the right fashion and also there are many different data sets available some of the data sets are very very popular are the microsoft data set which is very very helpful to understand like what is the term for this particular data and what is the actual response that you're looking for whether is it a positive or negative or it's a classified data or non-classified data so we need to create the data set in such a way that the data is always in a right fashion so that we don't get these kinds of problems that we just saw and also another way we can make sure that these data set can be tested correctly and the models perform things more better fashion is by fine tuning the data. So we can train the model on diverse data set containing examples of acceptable and unacceptable response across various sentiment levels. And for instance, using data set like the sentiment 140. So if you just go and search in the hugging face, sentiment 140, you'll get this one. Our customer feedbacks can help fine tune the model's response to align the desired sentiment output. So we can do this way as well. So fine tuning can also help to try to improve the models in a better fashion. And another way probably we could have eliminated this problem is by using the bias and fairness. So for instance, if you wanted to test the bias and if you want to test it in a fairness way, you need to identify and minimize the bias by including balanced data representing different demographics and use cases. Because that is very important as well. Because in some countries, few words mean something else, but whereas in other countries, it might be a completely a very, very serious thing altogether. So bias and fairness should be exactly matched based on the demographies and also based upon the genders and stuff and that's something which the model needs to be tested as well so how do we test this bias and fairness well we need to have a testing done in an automated fashion as well so we need to probably monitor the sentiment drift in responses all the time and we need to identify any unexpected negative or neutral outputs when their positive response is expected in there so we need to probably monitor this so that we can ensure that the model is always working and it's not fine-tuned with a wrong data that is another way that we could have probably tested the biases and finally real-time monitoring this could be the last resort this is the place where we are going to involve the real human beings to really monitor the sentiment analysis of our models and ensure that the model always predicts and also categorize and flags everything as expected so these are the way that we can probably test our model and I'm not telling that the OpenAI team has completely missed the David Mayer name, but these are some of the learnings which probably we as a test engineer should have probably done that to make sure that the model always work as expected. And once again, testing AI model is not as classical as the classical software testing or any classical software automated testing, but this is very, very complex and testing it with various data set or huge data set is going to be very challenging as well. So it's going to be quite complex and personally i have not really worked on any of the ai model in that advanced level it will be great if you have more suggestion or any direction so that you can put the details on the comments below so that we can discuss in our youtube channel directly so that we can always learn ourselves like how we can test the ai model in more better fashion well if i missed any details in this particular video please let me know on the comments below and before I close this particular video, I also want to ensure that the name David Mayer is finally being resolved by the ChatGPT. So if you go ahead and search for uh, David Mayer, and if you ask ChatGPT to enter the name David Mayer, it is just going to work fine without any problem. That's all, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video, and you guys have a great day.